vigilant, be watchful <laughs> of what you important. buy, what you consume. Yeah, All right. Important. Now to our next uh, topic for the day. Like product adulteration, smuggling is another menace bedeviling our country. But the Nigeria Customs Service has continued to show an unwavering commitment to exposing activities of smugglers. As such, customs operatives intercepted nine containers carrying offensive items worth about 13.9 billion naira. The seized items include arms, ammunition, illicit drugs, and second-hand clothes. Speaking of the seized items at the Oneir Port in River State, the Comptroller General of Customs, Adewale Adeniye, noted that one of the containers, which originated from Turkey, raised suspicions due to the number of risk factors associated with the importation. Let's share the story by TVC News' Uchi Okoro with you. It is one of the largest seizures of illegal arms by the Customs Service. Officials placed the shipment under surveillance from its destination in Turkey after suspecting illegal activity. We followed diligently as the importer of this container attempted to circumvent our procedure through the outlet of a private bonded terminal. The suspicious container was subjected to thorough physical examination. The result reveals the following alarming contents. Number one, we had inside the container 844 units of assorted rifles. Number two, 112,500 pieces of live ammunition. It is a major breakthrough in the government's efforts to curb revenue leakage, but more importantly, its implication for national security. Wait for Some persons have been arrested in connection with the shipment, but the identities were not made public. These rifles and ammunition were concealed using various items such as doors, furniture, plumbing fittings, and leather bags. The duty paid value, if we are to calculate the, the value and the duty paid of the container itself, is estimated at 4 billion. The Customs Service handed over the seizure to the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, whose job is to trace, document, store and destroy illegal weapons. This handover is not merely a procedural formality. It represents a commitment to international best practices in the safekeeping and destruction of intercepted and retrieved illegal weapons. By consolidating our resources and coordinating our actions, we can prevent any risk of diversion or loss of these arms and ammunition. Authorities have promised thorough investigation to unravel the motive, the sponsors and end users of these arms. Uche Okoro, TVC News, on air. When this news broke yesterday and you know, I saw the pictures live pictures of these arms and ammunition. 844. I mean, I was, I, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I think we should equally add to it that the brother of the arms and ammunition was also in that container. Which is? Drug. Illicit drugs. Mm. Tramadol codeine with duty paid value of 9.6 billion naira. So what it means is the factors that enable or fuel irrational behavior, we have two of them Combining that. in that season. Because when you look at most of the um, attacks we have in the country, most of the I mean, most of the bandits, most of the terrorists that we have, they are usually people who engage in drugs and they have access to arms and ammunition. It's been established very clearly. In the early years of um, Boko Haram, when we were still trying to 
understand, understand what this is all about. Is it just simply religion? And at some point, we had the military, especially the Nigerian army, enter into the camps of these people when they push them out. Some of the things they found beyond the arms and the ammunition are drugs. Tramadol especially. Though they also still find pleasurable things, things they use for pleasure like condoms there. Mm. But you find tramadol there, you find a lot of bottles of codeine based syrups, you find um, gum, which they say they also sniff. sniff. And then you can begin to understand that if somebody can, this is just the duty paid value we are talking about. Yeah. 9.6 billion for, of tramadol codeine in one seizure. That's massive. Massive indeed. You know, Massive. These, uh, the arms and ammunition were in one container. There yeah. were eight other mm. containers that contained these yes. other items. Now, this is just what they were able to capture. Exactly. Who knows how many others As, slip through. through? You know, in fact, up till this moment, I'm still alarmed and scared. Because mere looking at those things, the first question I ask myself is, are we a nation at war? Because if, you, if it is a nation at war and you want to arm your military men or whatever, these are kind of things you, you import. Even if it's a nation at war, it will be the government bringing it in. That is what I'm saying. I'm so, I, 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 I still feel goose pimples and feel creepy. Anytime I watch it and I see it like this, pump action gone, what for? What? If you allow this one to seep into Nigeria today, mm. uh, we will be worse than what we are already in now. And as he said, to know that so, uh, the, 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 these things were not even alone. They had drugs and so on and so on. So you know that definitely these were not things that are being imported for any good reason. Why should... We have pump gun, action gun, uh, AK-47, and all that. These are not pistols. These are real <laughs> combat uh, guns. So I, I honestly want to once again salute the Nigerian custom. Because if you say it is worth 13.9 billion naira, it means that the importer will be ready to give even a billion, if not more, to, no more. to settle. To settle these people that look less. But, and then you ask yourself, what exactly do they want to do with it? it are we is, um, like a transit camp for this ammunition, are there some people who come to Nigeria to come and buy them? Where's the or, final destination? Or, or exactly. So, or is it that all this will be used inside this same country that we are in today? We have not had all this. We are having all these troubles. We must always be vigilant. And the custom, the NDLA, and all those uh, security agencies at the port, they must make sure that they have their well-trusted men and women at the port so that they can be very vigilant and they will not be easily tempted. Because when you look at this thing now, you ask yourself, what exactly is the motive? And then, uh, at the port, they talk of what they call uh, pre-shipment inspection. Was there no pre-shipment ins inspection in Turkey? For this particular one, the customs even said that suspicion arose, especially yes. regarding the mm -hmm. container carrying the arm okay. from Turkey. Well, exactly. And they had their eyes on it mm -hmm. since waiting. then, waiting, you know, monitoring it every step, you know. No, that's, where, that's where I'm going that. Okay, now, if there is suspicion, is there no way that we could have asked 
them to either return it mid uh, C or or maybe we have, maybe what, what they, 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 there is no way we would have been able to to arrest to, to arrest any people. Was, huh. It's good for us for because I'm still it's good scared, for us honestly. Because for me, I also see it as um, a good one for the custom. Yes. But beyond that is the fact that we have these things in. Mm. Nothing stops the government from converting to good use. That's why I like the step that the uh, CG took. At that briefing, we had a representative of the National Security Advisor, yeah. Alam Nouribad. At that same briefing, we had um, the coordinator of the Small Arms and Small Light Arms, yes. Committee. That's uh, retired Deputy Inspector General of Police, Johnson. Johnson Kokuma. So it shows that there is synergy. There is synergy. And if they were going to do 100% inspection, mm. like they did, it also meant that the customs worked with NDLA, yes. police, police, and others, mm. even the FCC, yes. American Financial Crimes mm. and the ICPC. That's the meaning. All those agencies that are there, which makes it good. Which makes it good. But like he said, what we need to do is to get to the bottom of this. Because if you have, say, about 50 billion to bring in these things, then we need to know the motive. Yeah. Where is it added to? Some people must have showed up, including those they arrested, mm. perhaps to bribe. Mm. We need to get to the bottom of it. Because in 2021, I recollect there was a story, a major story in the newspaper that asked the question, all of these kind of Jesus we have made in the past, where are they? Yeah. Because we need to be able to tell Nigerians that these things are also not slipping back. Yeah. Into the society. Mm. Because when we look at what is happening in different parts of the country, especially in the southeast, mm. northwest, yeah. north central and northeast, a lot of arms and ammunition are on the loose. It gets tiring when you have to go to check the figures. How many of such Light arms. And these ones are not light. They are no, not. They are not by any means. <laughs> they are, they are not. Heavy, light. heavy weapons. Everyone. How, how, many guns? Of, how many of them are in circulation? Because sometimes you see these people that they, who claim to be members of IPOB, who mm. claim to be members of ESN, mm. carrying some of these weapons. Mm. You see the um, bandits and terrorists in the, in the north. Carrying all these, yeah. All of these things. So we need to be able... If this happens to be the sources, then we should be able to track some of those who are behind it. All right, gentlemen. We really need it. All right, gentlemen. Let's take a moment. When we come back, the conversation continues on Journalist Hangout. Please stay. Many thanks for staying with us on the Tuesday edition of Journalist Hangout. We are still talking about the seizures made by the Nigeria Customs Service. 844 rifles were recovered. Those rifles... Uh, alongside with uh, some drugs, secondhand clothing, ammunition, and uh, you know several other items at the on airport in uh, Rivers State. Uh, the Controller General of the Nigeria Customs Service, Adewale Adeni, and others briefed the press there, uh, talking about those seizures. Uh, you were making a point, Dotson, before the break, the need for us to get to the bottom of this matter. Yes, there is a need for us to really, really do. Because... Even in recent past, we've had such seizures, meaning that these people are not getting yeah, detached. Yeah. They, they don't care how long it takes them. Because I can't imagine somebody losing about 25, 50 billion in a failed venture and then still wanting to do it again. March 17, 2024, I think I'm here. Seizures were made. Yeah. November 5, 2023, in Port Harcourt, same place, same thing. July 17, 2023, Tinkan was the same thing. In fact, in, in the case of that of July 17, these things were stuffed inside bags of charcoal just to ensure they, 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 they get away with it. So we need to be able to, you know, at some point, what some 
agencies in Nigeria, security agencies in Nigeria did, was to try to track the source of funding of yeah. terrorism. Mm. And at that point, when we got it right, and they were able to cut off some, because they obviously they have found new routes of funding, of course, but which are yeah. not as effective as it used to be. That's why these things are going down. Mm. We also need to be able to find the source of this. Because until when we cut it off, these things won't stop. We know those, we know of people who are out, outside Nigeria who are trying to throw stones into Nigeria. Yeah. We've had people who, are, who, don't, who I'm not even sure will know what Nigeria looks like again, who have stayed so, but who are always bitter about what is happening in Nigeria. Yeah. We need to start tracing sources All right. so that we get it right. Mm. So, mm, so the Customs Service mentioned that about three suspects have been arrested, but the identity you know, is not revealed just yet. Yes. Um, because they are still suspects, and also because they also need to protect them, because, as he has said, anyone or any group of persons that have put down this amount of Naira will do everything possible to protect his identity. So these three people that, were, that have been arrested, if they tell us their names or show us uh, their pictures now, it might jeopardize the investigation. So the best thing to do is to allow them to give their, uh, to, to tell us what they know about it. It is from there that they will now begin to trace it the more. Because you know that in this one now, uh, the, it is the vigilance of the custom that led to this. They, it's not as if they brought all the guns just like that. They were hidden in furniture, doors, things like that. So, uh, second-hand clothing and all those things that uh, you look at and you say, oh, they are not, uh, they are innocuous things. Is this the same way that they need to look at even vehicles imported? Containerized vehicles and so on and so forth. They need to be more vigilant to look at all those things. As Yoruba would say, yebe, yebe. Look at it in all ramifications to ensure that what you declare is what is there. I mean, it is still uh, a misery that uh, some people will be out there, either as Nigerians or even not as Nigerians, will be making sure that they destabilize the country. We must not give them that room. Because in all this, uh, the way I see it is that there must be some people who are behind all this. Either uh, they are Nigerians or they are not Nigerians. And we know the way it is going, this thing will lead to uh, future crisis. Because if you allowed all these things to get into this country now, uh, mm -hmm. so, I, 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 I'm just short of words. Mm. Because I, up till this moment, when I look at that picture, the video, I get scared. I say, ah, what is in the mind of those people who are bringing this thing? It, it's, it's very scary. We are not, this is not uh, Lebanon. This is not... Uh, South Sudan, neither is it. I mean, it is things like, it was, it was things like this that led to what happened in Liberia and Syria alone. And Nigeria is too big and too populated for us to, to, to go to sleep. Indeed, and we must not allow this to happen. Yes, and it also speaks to the need for us to invest in intelligence, intelligence gathering, and invest in machines, in technology that can help us search, you know, just like that word mm. is, search through whatever comes in, search through thoroughly to ensure that we don't miss out anything. Yeah, you are very right on that. You know, we've always um, clamored mm. for intelligence gathering. 
and I think it worked here. Yeah. We've seen the power of, of it. The, there was a time in the National Assembly when proposals were made for scanners yeah. and for the ports. Mm. These things don't come cheap again. No. It might not be feasible. Mm. Saying we want to invest in it now. Not because this part of, I mean, this sector is not important, but because Nigeria is going through a lot. So, it's still our officers and men who are going to keep appealing to this. You do as much as they can. Because I don't, I don't envy them having to do 100% uh, inspection. inspection using their hands, pulling mm. this, pulling that. You know, we see the way it's easy, even when you have to use uh, sniffer dogs yeah. to bring out, um, to, to, to search out cocaine and all that, all that drugs. Exactly. It's easier than having to, you know, bring down everything, bring down everything and, and checking. So we are going to keep investing. But until when that happens, when we have the right equipment that can do it for us, we've also got to have men and officers who are willing, diligent. For instance, not long ago, we had of a policeman who ejected a 150 million naira bribe, mm. which is good. We've had of others. And I know in this case, if we, if we probe further, we'll see that money would have been offered. Yes. But was rejected. Mm. Those are the kind of men we need now. And then we also need to invest in the welfare of our of, officers. Of, yes, which is important. In because fact, if because they are well taken care of, if they are welfare, they'll then, be less tempted. Yes. In fact, that for me is the most crucial aspect of all we are talking about. Because there are ways to look at it. Um, a man that is well taken care of will be patriotic. And such a person will know that, look, if I allow this thing to go in, it might not affect me directly, but it might affect someone that I know, someone that is close to me. So with that, taking care of our uh, security of, of, uh, personnel is very, very important. We are not discontinuing the fact that we need to invest in technology. Yes, technology helps a lot in, uh, in, in, in doing all this. But in the same way, technology will not use itself. It is man that will use the technology. Okay, if you have scanners and you have on duty disgruntled officials mm -hmm. and they turn off the scanners, are we going to say that we don't have the technology? No. So all we, we need, as much as we are emphasizing technology, we must also emphasize the need to take good care of the personnel and also make sure that uh, people don't stay too long in a particular position or a particular spot. Because by the time they stay too long in a particular spot, they get uh, complacent and also get compromised. So, but in a situation where you are, you've taken good care of them, and then from time to time you change them, and then you re reorientate them, that will make sure that we have a, uh, a service that is very, very uh, efficient. We must not fail to emphasize that right. technology is to be used by man. And if man fails to use, I mean, you have a situation where there was a, a, a case uh, in an office that has a CCTV. The day they were going to steal something, it was one of the officials who knew that there's a CCTV that turned it off. But unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> While he was doing that, he never reckoned that he had been recorded. <laughs> and so it was that that let out the that, that let the cat out of the bag, as they say. 
that was he had to be pinpointed and at the end of the day he confessed so we must make sure that even when we have technology people that are going to man those technological uh, uh, equipment yes. are also not people that will be easily compromised all right so we're checking out for their character and yeah. he also said something about operation rotation don't keep yeah. him you know, officers at a certain post for too long, for too long. so they don't become complacent and uh, compromised in the process. All right, but of course, kudos to the Nigeria Customs Service oh, no, and huge uh, one. all the agencies all that the worked agencies, with them yeah. to NAVDAC, show this. Uh, customs, at least they, 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 they have their, our support. Because, look, <laughs> this is what we always say on, on this program. Yes. Anytime we censor any agency. It is not because we don't like them. It is because we want them to do better. And they should not feel that maybe the next time when they fall on the other side and we talk about it, they'll say, no, we don't talk about the good things we have done. We will always talk about the good things we have done, but we will also point out to you where you fall short. Right. And so, so now that... Commendation and, for today. Uh, today is... Commendation. Yeah, commendation. <laughs>